Chronic pain creeps up on you like a monster from a horror film. It's unexpected, lurks in the shadows, and when it strikes, it's usually too late to stop it. More deviously, our strongest weapon against it, which is usually pain medication, can actually make the agony worse over time and have nasty side effects such as feeling tired all day long. So even pain medication, as the opioid crisis unfortunately demonstrates, is a double-edged weapon. But fear not, there's now an actual solution, and it works by fixing the issue from where it actually originates. Inside of your brain. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I will show you how scientists manage to fix and suppress some of the worst experiences of humanity, how this is going to be done and what the consequences of that may be. It's past time for a change. Just last week, a group of researchers from the New York University School of Medicine declared, no thank you, to all pain medications. Instead, they created a so-called neural bridge that connects two brain regions, one that detects pain and the other that dampens it when it is engaged. This one is very unique in terms of a brain implant. It's essentially a spy and a sleeper agent tag team. The spy listens in real time to electrical chatter in a brain area that processes pain, as well as dozens of other functions. It transmits the information to the sleeper agent, a computer chip placed in the front portion of the brain, whenever it detects an electrical signal that indicates pain discovered. The chip then activates neurons that can overcome pain signals by triggering a laser beam to stimulate the area. Sounds pretty crazy, doesn't it? But this is just one of the almost countless applications that brain-computer interfaces such as Elon Musk's Neuralink will enable in the future. The beauty of this brain-computer interface is that it only activates when there is pain, rather than constantly zapping the brain. That is, it is precise and effective. This brain-computer interface has been the first of its kind to actually have been demonstrated on a living brain and thus serves as a blueprint for adjusting the brain to reduce pain in future clinical trial participants. The findings demonstrate that this device may be used to treat pain effectively, even in situations when symptoms are difficult to identify or manage. Brain implants have progressed from the pioneers of the field, the Utah Array and BrainGate, to Neuralink's elegant neural interface with stitched in electrode threads. However, the majority of them only deal with one aspect of the problem, sensing and decoding. It's already a mammoth undertaking, but it allows brains to physically connect to a computer. Monkeys using their wits to play Pong. Brainwaves allow paralyzed individuals to type or browse the internet. The more difficult aspect is connecting the brain to other sections of the nervous system. Rather than controlling a cursor with decoded signals, the signals here control another brain area or a bodily component. Electrical stimulators, for example, can be added to prosthetic hands to convey pressure, temperature, and other sensations by zapping residual nerves. These impulses are then sent to the brain, which decodes them and sends commands back through a different network of nerves to regulate how the hand moves. Brain stimulators, for example, detect aberrant electrical patterns linked with seizures and zap brain areas to interrupt those impulses automatically. These systems progress beyond just detecting or acting to tightly connecting the two, hence the term, closed-loop systems. They work in the same way that human brains do. Regions that receive input process it and send it to other relevant areas. These impulses subsequently cause a response, such as consciousness, movement, or a change in feeling. The technology was first tested in rats for short bursts of severe pain, akin to what you'd feel if you burnt your hand on a hot stove or walked on a Lego block. The decoder, a state space model software, was able to interpret pain signals consistently with up to 80% accuracy and only a few seconds delay. It may also sense mechanical pain signals, such as a light pin prick to the rat's foot pad, comparable to a needle tip snagging your fingertip when sewing. When the scientists turned on the stimulator, the animals withdrew their paws 40% more slowly, indicating pain relief. Another test was performed to look for both mechanical and chronic pain caused by inflammation. Consider arthritis, persistent back pain, or fibromyalgia, where the rats were housed in two chambers. On one hand, the implant activated when pain signals were recognized. It, on the other hand, turned on at random. The rats spent significantly longer time in the first room, suggesting that the implant reduced their discomfort while it was happening. Similarly, the implant helped those with neuropathic pain, which is a condition in which the pain is the problem. 
The nerves and sensors that convey pain become ultra-sensitive at this point, making even a mild touch unpleasant. The rats responded to the brain implant here as well, spending more time in the room when pain alleviation was activated. The authors created a pain-controlling closed-loop system based on prior research. It was a coin flip whether it worked or not. The researchers said that using closed-loop brain implants for sensory problems is extremely speculative. Pain, unlike muscular motions or cursor control, is extremely difficult to pin down in the brain. According to the authors, they had to choose an input arm for signal detection and an output arm for therapy first. They focused on the anterior cingulate cortex a U-shaped region of the brain that has been proven to process pain in both animals and humans, for the pain decoding arm. A microarray of electrodes was implanted here to listen in on brain activity. An optical cable was implanted into the prelimbic prefrontal cortex as the output treatment arm. In both rats and monkeys, stimulation of PFC neurons has been shown to attenuate pain signals from the ACC. If the ACC is a sobbing baby who stubbed his toe, the PFC is the parent who says, it'll be okay. The optical fiber activates the PFC using optogenetics, a process that utilizes light to regulate genetically engineered neurons. The technology as a whole creates a real-time feedback loop that, in theory, reduces pain as soon as it is triggered in the brain. The research is groundbreaking. It's one of the first studies to employ a sophisticated, closed-loop brain implant to detect and treat pain bursts in real time. It's also the first to focus on chronic pain, which typically develops without warning. But this is only the beginning. Although most brain implants begin with rat research, the transition from rodent to primate to human is a long one. One major problem is determining where to record pain signals. The ACC is akin to Grand Central Station, as it is where the scientists inserted electrodes to monitor pain signals in this study. It has a wide range of functions, including pain processing, empathy, decision-making, and social behaviors, because of its extensive links to other brain areas. The scientists noted that activity collected from the ACC may be utilized for pain identification in a prototype method, and that the interface could reveal improved targets for capturing chronic pain signals in animal models, and possibly in humans. What's even cooler, is that the activated brain area doesn't typically produce euphoria, which is one of opioids' drawbacks. As a result, it's more likely to reduce the risk of addiction. Because the device only stimulates the brain when pain signals are detected, there is less possibility that the brain will adapt to the stimulation. That is, rather than converting the brain into an alcoholic who requires increasing amounts of alcohol, it is more like being a social drinker on occasion. While brain implants may appear to be overkill in the treatment of chronic pain, they could represent a new option for chronic sufferers, similar to the option given to people with epilepsy, who were among the first to have closed-looped brain-computer interfaces implanted to control their seizures, giving them hope when drugs fail. The scientists involved in the project claim that we can interpret pain from brain impulses as they occur. But recent findings suggest that a new blueprint for therapy may be used to block such signals. They also believe that in the near future we might even be able to block feelings of disgust when eating certain foods or to block feelings of hunger. These two abilities could help millions of people on their journey of losing weight. But then there's also the future possibility of this kind of technology being abused. Because if you can suppress neurons from making you experience pain, you can just as well stimulate them in a way that makes you experience constant agonizing pain without a real cause. This could especially become a problem once brain-computer interfaces have become small enough to be implanted without you knowing or needing a doctor present. Well, I, I think at, at launch, it's probably going to be... It, it, I, I would say that's not really representative, because um, at first, I think it's, it's going to be you know, quite expensive, but that price will very rapidly drop. Um, and I think over time, we want to get the, the cost um, obviously down as low as possible, um, but I think um, I inclusive of the automated surgery, I think we want to get the, 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 the price down to a few thousand dollars, something like that. Um, and I, I think that's possible. I think it should be possible to get it similar to um, LASIK and, and then the uh, device electronics itself, um, I think will, will not be very expensive um, because it actually does, does use a lot of the parts that are made in extremely high volume in tens of millions of, of units. Uh, for uh, smartphones and, and smartwatches.
and war wearables. But obviously we're still quite far away from getting to that point. So what is your opinion on brain-computer interfaces having advanced enough to directly influence the way we're feeling or experiencing the world? Would you remove your ability to feel pain completely, or just enough to still be aware of fatal diseases? What about the possibility of brain-computer interfaces being able to make you feel more pain? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.